Buddy, it's Andy. Thursday, live office hours, helping you build a career you love. Thanks for being with me today. Sunny and 90 degrees where I am. But I'm feeling light and fast and particularly sharp today. So I hope you got some great questions. And unlike the last four times we got together for that workshop, that job interview mastery workshop, that was a smash. Thank you for helping me make that happen. It's all about you today. All your, all your Q's, all my A's. Let's go. I don't see any point in a lot of flowery warm-up. Who's here with me? I see DFP79, which I know is Dana. Great to have you. Saul, my boot camper, how you doing? Got some questions right away. <gasps> Connie Cotter. You know I always smile when I see that face. Sugar Pie and Tia. How are you doing? Oh, Donna, great to have you. Tony P. from Dunedin. Stacy Frank, my boot campers. And wait, oh, Beth McKenzie, my, my, McKenzie, my boot camper too. All right, let's get right into the questions because I know Sal's been waiting for like two days for me to answer this thing. All right, so question is, in the video, get the job after being rejected. Is there other language for another video? You can see I'm in the job search. Please pass my resume to colleagues, something like that, appropriate. Uh, so here's here's what I would say in the uh, let's see. So all right, Sal's got Sal's got this one. He's asking me about uh, the video that I created called "How to Get the Job After Being Rejected," and he's asking, "Is there other language or another video you can see I'm in the job search? Please pass my resume to a colleague." So all right, let's take that one first. So Sal on. Uh, on that video. For everybody who's not familiar with that video, it is a great piece of ammunition to have in your arsenal. If you go through an interviewing process and you make a connection with an organization and it doesn't work out or they let you go, there is a video I created for you that gives you uh, kind of a template to uh, thank them, also provide a bit of a um, just some parting eloquence that you go out with some class, you stay connected, you're teeing up a, uh, a great excuse for you to follow up with the company in 30 days because we, we know that if you make a great connection with the company, maybe they hire somebody else, maybe they balk, maybe they do something like that. Things don't always work out as the company had planned. We want to make sure that you are positioning yourself to, to, uh, to be able to follow up with them, especially if you built a great relationship. And what Saul's asking me is, there's some other language that I use from time to time about, I always think conceptually whenever I'm in an act, activity with anybody, whether I'm speaking with them on the phone, whether I'm with them in person, whether I've sent them an email or any of that good stuff, I always say, whatever happens throughout your job search, wherever you are at any moment in time, whatever the situation is that arises, the question you need to ask yourself is, what can I do with this right now? So if something happens where you send a boss hunting cover letter to somebody or, you, or, your, or your recruiter hunt, or maybe you're in an interviewing process and it doesn't work out, you, you can always turn that opportunity into a networking opportunity. So Sal is saying, uh, he must have heard me say somewhere, you can see I'm in a job search, please pass my resume to a colleague or something like that. I think what I what I probably more, more likely said is, as you can see that I'm in a job search, uh, basically start asking the person for advice. Do you know of anyone or anything of that nature? So I don't have exact language laying around, Sal, but for the purposes of the, of the message here, you all... If you reach out to a recruiter, you reach out to a boss, you reach out to somebody and they respond to you, my point to that is you can do something even with a negative response, right? You don't have to just take no for an answer. You can say, okay, well, what can I do with this? No, I have this person who engaged me, engaged me back. So ask, ask to go forward. And that is a, a, a medium to do that. So, so that's that's on that one. And then uh, Sal's asking me, where do I find today's lines to live by? So for those of you who are not familiar, I have for a very long time, uh, almost a decade now, 
been writing daily lines. Uh, they have been circulated in various forms. I've service marked the expression today's line to live by because it's going to be going into some things that will help you with your daily lives. Calendars, booklets, journals, those kind of things. And I do circulate them every morning on the social media sites, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. The easiest place, I think, to find them because it's it's the best platform is Instagram. Because Instagram, you can literally take a snapshot of, of the person's profile, mine or anybody else's. You can look at all of the things that are there. So Sal, I would say if you follow me on Instagram, it's the best way. If you start following me on the other sites like Facebook or LinkedIn, while great, um, you know those slide by in a feed and LinkedIn is the worst platform for getting your, your news. Uh, Facebook is the second worst platform for getting your news because it's it's very selective in what it serves up to the people you're connected with. That's why I say Instagram will always serve it up to you. And the other thing is you can look at it and glance at it in one shot. And the other thing that's awesome about Instagram, you, a lot of you probably don't know this. You know how I put a video out on YouTube every week on Tuesdays and then sometimes on Fridays I do I do something a little more inspirational? On Instagram, I put two videos out every single day every single day, Monday through Friday. And the quote cards go out every single day, twice a day. So if you're looking for job searching help, if you go to my Instagram page and you just glance at it, every video is titled. You can literally see in the, in the picture what it is. And then it's one minute to eight or 10 minutes and then it goes on IGTV or it goes in the Instagram feed. There's way, there's a lot more job searching out there too, and inspirational stuff. So you can you can grab that there. They're on they're on the platforms. Uh, I used to put it on the blog, but I don't do that anymore, just from a, a maintenance standpoint. And thank you, my friend. It's great to have you in the program. It really is great to have you as a beloved boot camper, my friend. And Connie Cotter, there's another boot camper and a leader. Awesome. That's all right, Connie. Any minute that I get to spend with you is a good minute. Oh, great to see you guys. Let's see. Cindy Dixon, how are you? Oh, you're, you're sugar pie. Make sure to put some question marks in front of your questions, folks. Let me know who you are, where you're from, what you need. And I think, let me see. Donya, hey to you. Video interview, good luck on that. Frank, Beth, Daisy, hey, here we go. What do we got here? Daisy Guzman. All right. Let me see if I can swap this around. Hang on. Let me let me do some housekeeping here so it's a little easier for me to see stuff. How do you indicate on a resume that you supervised 10 employees in a department during multiple times that directors were being fired and hired? Daisy, I would not go to that level of explanation in a resume. Um let me let me say it this way to you. Your resume, there are a couple things that you need to recognize about your resume. And Daisy, by the way, this is not personal to you. Uh, this is this is very common. It's very common with individuals I coach one on one. It's very common with people who ask questions inside the Malwa Academy. It's very common in the questions that I get on YouTube. People, I need you to understand this. Your resume, first things first, is not a work history document. Okay, it is, it is not. It is a marketing document. What you want to do is you want to put yourself in the best light and advertise yourself for where you want to go. Okay, your past certainly enables you because it has the raw data that you need to take to put into the resume. But you need to think forward and then look at your resume and ask, is this resume going to get me where I want to go? What happens is we are all emotionally attached to the things that we've done in our lives. And I cannot stress enough how unattached and unemotional I am as a reviewer or anybody else that looks at your resume is. No one cares what the stock market was doing. No one cares how bad a company you worked for. No one cares how hard you work. No one cares that you put in 16-hour days. No one cares that you worked weekends for a year. Okay, You care because you lived it. And now you want to share that with the world. But 
No one is going to be in, as emotionally invested. No one is going to feel your pain, especially for something that happened three years ago. So don't you try to channel all your emotional efforts into wanting to articulate every single thing that you've been through, no matter how bad it was or what a feat it is that you think it was because people were getting fired, people were getting laid off, the market was going down, so I had to make twice as many sales calls or whatever. Just stick to highlighting very positive stuff. If you're trying to go through detailed explanations in your resume about how bad an environment you were in or how awful your boss was or any of that stuff, you are inviting, inviting negative discussions in the stories that you will ultimately need to tell at some point if you are fortunate enough to get an interview. So stay away from all that. So Daisy, back to you. Just talk about how you manage the employees. Do you know what I want to know about how you manage those employees? Did they did they do their job well? Was the team united? Were, were, did you get 10 people to operate like 20 people could because you had a Muhammad? Did they get promoted on your watch? Those are the only things I care about. The only things. So, so that's the stuff you need to draw my attention to. Get me excited about what you can do and what you did. And don't drag me into all the turmoil you were in. That it just you don't you don't you don't need to be there. You don't need to take me there. I'll never get there as emotionally as you will. So Daisy, this has nothing to do with you. I'm just saying, everybody, we all want to share what a Herculean effort that was, but no one cares, right? You've heard me say this before about you know, hello, welcome to the town of you know, no one cares, population seven point seven billion. Right, and, and I'm just saying, you need to detach yourself from that, put a marketing document together that's going to get you to where you want to go and focus on all the positive stuff that you've done. That's the best advice I can give you. That's reality. Now, all that aside, I care about you. I love that when people show up. I love when you need my help. I love that I can be able to help you. But that's the cold hard truth about how people look at resumes. So think about that. Look at your resume. Is it filled with a lot of stuff that would invite a discussion that you're going to have to take me into how bad something was? That's not where you want to go with your stories. And one other thing, and I don't want to go into this too, too much, but there is a congruence in what you do in your, in your resume. And it doesn't start with your resume. It doesn't even start with your, with your work history. You have to go back and reflect about what was happening, the data that is important to be sharing, not only in your resume and in the stories that you're ultimately going to have to tell in your interviews, but you need to think about if, if the resume is a marketing document and it's going to get me in front of somebody where I can sell me and my services to them as an employee, I'm going to ultimately have to tell stories as well. Are the stories that I'm going to be sharing congruent with the stories that are on my resume? And are the stories that are on my resume congruent with where I want to go? You have to look at that. All that needs to be in order. You can't have a work history that is not advertised in the way into to the spot you want to go. If you're a career changer, you have to figure out how to adjust what you put on your resume to tell an accurate story of what you can do based on where you want to go. All that stuff needs to be thought through. So what is it you need to collect? The stories, those scenes from your work history that are going to go on your resume, that are going to turn into stories that you're ultimately going to tell. So think about what you're... Think about what you're putting on your resume because you need to be thinking about that with the future in mind that I'm going to be in front of somebody explaining the story. That's what you want to tell. All right, I hope that helped. I know that was probably way more than you were wondering, but I think it's important that you know I would I would try to stay away from those kinds of stories in the resume, in the cover letters, in the emails. I would not be bringing that stuff up. Hope that helps. All right. Hey. Almost a couple hundred people. If you, I forget this. I didn't. I don't think I said this one time in the last four sessions. If you love the Thursday Live Office Hours, if you're loving the session, hit the thumbs up button and share this. This one stays up there. So, so this one's going to stay up there. So if you need to revisit my answers to your questions, it's going to be there forever and ever and even after I die. Okay. MG, Medina, Kara's with me, Larry Cohen, whatever this is, we're going to answer it for you, buddy. 
My boot camper Larry Cohen, hi Andy. When asked to submit the application via the ATS, there typically is no area to provide the career profile or career highlights. How should we present this valuable information? Larry, I'm not really sure what you mean. Uh, your resume is attached. I would simply attach it. And there is usually a section for free form. So if you are um, talking about, well, when I go into the applicant tracking system, they want me to give my work history. Uh, what I would do is I would have a, right, and, and there's, you're, you're, I'm assuming what you're saying is, I have, you know, I worked at company XYZ, previously I worked at company ABC, and so on, and the ATS wants me to take that and fill that in, but they don't give me a separate bucket where I'd like to put my career highlights. Well, the first thing is your career highlights should be the same exact bullets that are somewhere in the professional work experience section. So those should be covered in whatever slot you're 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 putting it in. In the in the most recent uh, job or or even the few recent ones, talk about the major accomplishments and aggregate them and have a have a career profile, so to speak, summary profile, summary section for that particular company and so you could have many profiles uh, along and uh, along uh, throughout their ATS that coincide with each one of those with each one of those uh, positions I think that's I think that's where you're going with that and if it wasn't you can see me tomorrow in the session so so ask me then that's a great one all right hey Dean great to hear you got your interview intervention book today all right so Dean is uh, I, I want you guys to know something. All right, this guy, interview intervention, since April 2018, I've been giving away hard cup, cup covers. I paid for all the books, okay? I paid them. They're, they're stored in a warehouse in McHenry, Illinois. They go out to anywhere in the world. All I ask you to do is pay my envelope fee and the service fees, fees for the warehouse dudes to pick the thing. I even cover your mailing costs. So it's seven dollars for materials and handling. You get this. You get the ebook. You get the audio book, and you get another ebook called "How to Interview the Employer: Seventy-Five Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job." But if you missed the memo or you did not sign up for the Job Interview Mastery Workshop over the last couple of weeks, I did four live shows that uh, that you guys were invited to. One was on how to prepare for a job interview. One was on answering job interview questions. The third one was on uh, asking questions in a job interview. And the fourth one was on following up after a job interview. That's packaged up. It is a bonus for people in my job search boot camp. It's free when you enroll in that program. If you're interested in that program, let me know. The special that we were running is over. But if you email support at malwalk.com and say, hey, I heard Andy yapping about the Job Search Boot Camp and you got a live coaching boot camper session on June 19th, I want to come to that and I want to I wanna pay $100, uh, I pay $100 less than the list price, we'll give it to you. But one other thing, on Monday, if you did sign up for the Job Interview Mastery Workshop, we've never done this before, but I packaged it up because there was so many requests during the, during the workshop and after the workshop for the replays. So what I did was I took the entire Job Interview Mastery Workshop, it's set up as a, as a training course, along with my interview intervention training course, the original uh, Lee shot interviewing course that I created for this book, as well as the main session on interviewing in my job search boot camp, along with a bunch of other stuff. It was like almost six hundred dollars worth of training. I packaged it up, and until uh, until tomorrow night, it's ninety seven bucks. So people have been gobbling that up this week. Uh, this is one shot deal. You can have it all if you want the interview coaching. It's a ton of great stuff. You can get in the live Facebook group and the LinkedIn groups. There's a few other things, but basically, and I think we, I think Kara even put it in the email we sent you this morning to announce live office hours. So if you're interested in that, maybe she can drop it in the chat. Take it. It's a steal. 
It really is. And if at any point in the future you decide you want to upgrade to the to my premium job search boot camp, you can take the $97 as a credit and we'll we'll put it towards your enrollment fee in the boot camp. Because we anything job searching related, we we give you credit for if you ever want to become uh, a boot camper. So so I hope I hope you enjoy that. Dean, thanks for that. Glad you got the book. Uh, they are still picking it. It takes a the warehouse guys are picking them fast. It's the it's the U.S. Postal Service that's a little slower these days because of the the COVID pandemic. But they're we're still shipping, and you get the ebook and the audio book immediately. Charlene Crocker and oh hey wait can I, I'm a you know what you've been so great thank you I want to become a boot camper but I am eternally grateful that I was able to afford your congratulations on enrolling in the job interview coaching collection today. That's what I'm talking about. So all of those. The job interview mastery, the interview intervention course, the main the main session piece of the uh, job search boot camp related to interviewing, and a few other things. Charlene, great to have you. That is awesome. Patrick Drury, how are you? Oh, Laura Cobb, I love you too. <laughs> Emma, how are you doing? Emery Smith, see, I blushed there a little bit. Props to you. Thank you for that. Daniel Gomez. This is phenomenal. Okay, wait. I love, I love, I love this one. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you an Andy-like answer here because you guys deserve this. So when you are job searching and you are looking at the digitally available, I don't know if I ever said that before, is that even is that even an expression? The digitally available information, meaning I go to a corporate website or I go to LinkedIn or wherever and I see a job's open. Now, on the red flags, you're never truly gonna know, okay? You're never truly gonna know unless you get in there and you start interviewing and you start asking the right questions. And you start looking at and understanding who the boss is, and if that if he's a nice guy or she's a great uh, lady. You know, are they warm and welcoming? Are they tough to work with? Has there been a lot of turnover and all that good stuff? And so you, you can get in there and you can start looking at red flags. Now, red flags when you get into the interviewing process can come in different forms, right? There's the oh my goodness, look at what a difficult person this would be to work with, right? The, you know, totally a dictator and all this other stuff, not very friendly, you know, about as warm as a wet mop, you know, that kind of stuff where you can see it. Or why is the position open? Somebody just quit. Why'd they quit? Um, the boss fired them. Well, what happened to the person before that? The boss fired them. What happened to the person before that? They left because the boss is a nut job. That kind of stuff, right? That's like bang square right in the face. You can also have red flags because... Maybe you don't feel that their product is great or their service is great or they got a lot of customer service complaints or whatever, right? So there's indirect flags. Those are observable as well. Okay, so there's some that are a little more immediate. There's some that are a little more observable or from a research standpoint, you know, these things start to raise red flags. I, 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 I almost... I'm not even sure I want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, when you start looking at glass door reviews, now I'm not big on glass door reviews, right? I think, you know, malcontents go out there and they write a lot of that stuff. But if you got a lot of that and you're noticing that, uh oh, this is consistent with what I was reading, you know, th those start sending off red flags. Okay. But you haven't talked to the company yet. So Daniel's asking me about when I'm looking to apply for a job. What are the red flags? Now, the first thing that I would say to you is, number one, when you're applying for a job, if it's a job that you feel you want, ignore everything and go and apply. Now, I would prefer that you go through somebody, you try to network, you boss hunt, you recruiter hunt, you get a referral or whatever. Go that route. Let's say you can't go that route. Then you go in through the applicant tracking system. That's fine. Go ahead. I want you to put faith in yourself that you will figure out whether it's the right environment for you. Just because somebody else complained on Glassdoor doesn't mean that you're not going to have a great time or that you won't connect with the boss or whoever. Okay, but when I start to look at the stuff online, if I'm a job seeker, I'm not just looking at the open position. I start looking at everything on the website. What's the website look like? 
Does it look like they put effort into it because they want to attract the right people? Are there management team profiles, employee profiles? Are there testimonials from employees, customers, right? Are those advertisables there? In this day and age, I don't care how private you are. You got to have this kind of stuff, okay? It's the game you got to play if you want to attract the right talent. So is that there, right? Start to look at that. Does it look like they're investing time in their recruitment? Now, on the one hand, I do like it when companies say, if you are interested in working for our organization, please submit a, your resume and a cover letter to careers at milewalk.com, right? That's cool, but I would much rather say, we welcome any inquiries to our organization. Uh, please email us, blah, blah, blah. You can see a list of our opportunities or a list of whatever's on the, you know, on the, on the portal. Now, if you go to the de job descriptions, don't just look at yours. First thing, look at the ones you like. Then look at the way the job is advertised. Does the employer spend a lot of time making demands about everything that they want? Soup to know, is it a five-page is it a five-page job description? No job description should be longer than one page, okay? Because you're just, you're nuts if you think you're going to write all this stuff, everybody's going to read all this stuff, and everybody's going to adhere to everything that you would like and the kitchen sink and all that other good stuff, okay? So you got this, you got this job description. Do they spend a portion of that job description, like 50%, advertising how awesome it will be for you? Not just what we want, but here's what we offer. When you start seeing things like this, here's what we offer. Here's why it's a great place to work. Here's this awesome boss you're going to get to work with, and so on. When you see all that, all the additional benefit, that's a good sign. When you don't see any of that, yellow flag, right? So, okay, so now you're looking at the job description. You're just looking for some, you're just trying to get a feel, right? You're just trying to get the vibe. Now, does it look like there's a career path? Do, you know, junior analyst, analyst, senior analyst, grand senior analyst, so on and so forth. And like, okay, are they hiring a lot of salespeople? Doesn't matter what you do. Are they hiring a lot of salespeople? Why do you want to know that? Who hires salespeople? Two kinds of companies, the kind that are growing or the kind that are losing salespeople all the time. So if they're hiring a lot of salespeople, you want to, you want to be able to walk into a job interview and say, ah, I noticed you're hiring a lot of salespeople, selling a lot of stuff kind of thing, right? That's great. Tell me about that. Well, well, actually, how many salespeople do you have now? 10. How many salespeople did you have last year at this time? 10. What happened? Well, we lost five, so we had to hire five, right? There's that kind of company too. These are kind of things you want to notice, right? This is detective work, right? This is the difference between somebody who's actually li like listening to what they're seeing versus just hearing noise, right? There's a job description. There's where I apply. There's where I say, like, are you actually looking at what is there and, and listening to what you're seeing, so to speak? You know, I'm right being metaphoric here, but like, that's what I'm talking about. When you start looking at things like that, it's not so much, uh oh, that's a red flag. I don't really care. I want you to get in there and talk to them. What I want you to know is, oh, that looks like something I ought to investigate. A lot of salespeople, it's going to be a good thing or it's going to be a bad thing, right? Are they climbing the market? Is their market share growing? Right, all this other stuff. If they're hiring a lot of engineers, that's probably a good thing too, unless they're burning them out. But same kind of thing, right? Product engineers, development engineers, those kind of things. That's how I look when I'm assessing an organization. And when I, it's not a matter of will I apply. So all y'all, you want to go for it, you go for it. Just apply. Right, well, preferably try to work your way in through the network. But my point is, I would rather you say, this is the information I need to check out. Okay, this is where my questions are going to come from in addition to what I need and generally evaluating them as a good company. But these are things I need to check. These are things that I can't ignore. That's what I want you to do, Daniel, and that's, that's how you're going to be successful. That's how you're going to make a good decision because it's going to be informed because you poked around, you observed, and you asked questions. So that's that's how I'd go about that, man. I mean, it's uh, that digital footprint tells you a lot. It does. Don't ignore it. All right. Karen Braswell, how are you? Myron Grimes, I thought about you the other day, brother. I was reading, uh, you know, I was packaging up some messages for that job interview mastery uh, workshop and I included that just 
awesome email you sent me that I shared with everybody. You remember the one about, about you just noticing how much I cared about my people? Well, I love it. I love it. I, I, that thing never gets old. That thing never gets old. I read it, I read it often. Mm. Michelle, how are you? Good to see you. I'm guessing it's hotter where you are than where, where I am. Sharonda, Rochelle Huntington Beach, how you doing? Priscilla, oh, my new boot camper, so glad to be here, great. Well, maybe if you, I don't know if I got your story yet. So maybe you sent it and it's in the queue because I have about 50 more to read before tomorrow. Um, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, anytime somebody joins my job search boot camp, the second email they get from us is, please share your story with me. I ask them a couple questions and then they write me like five pages of their life and I read them all and I make notes so I could be a better coach. That's how I know all these people. <laughs> Bob, how you doing? Sonia. Sonia's my boot camper and so is JG, my brother from another mother. David Francis, boot camper. Wait. Grew up in Mundelein in Libertyville. My wife was trying to check to see if the Firkin was open so we can go. And then she's sitting at my work table yesterday and she says, hey, Andy, the, the Firkin's open for, for, for food. I said, no, it can't be. We're not in the, you know phase what 10 or whatever we need to be for COVID. She, and she's insisting that the Firkin is open. And I said, honey, that's just not true. And then she discovered she was reading about the Firkin in California. So, but yeah, love that, love that place. Ashley Buck Colts. Let me see. What do we got here? Great, great picture. That's the kind of picture that needs to be on LinkedIn. I hope that's your LinkedIn profile too. That is a one smiling face. All right. Hi, Andy. I'm here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Would you put references on a cover letter or on your resume or nowhere? Ashley and everyone from Milwaukee or elsewhere in the world. No need, no need to put references. Here's a couple things, and I'm not just gonna say don't do it. Folks, this is important. This is really, really important. Let's get you some value out of this question for references. Everybody that is an employer that knows that they can solicit your references when they need to, okay? You don't need to write references available on request. You don't need to put in your cover letter, so-and-so is my reference. You don't need to put on your resume, I have all these, you know, grand poobahs who are, you know, I'm a big wig and I know all these big wigs. You don't need to do any of that. You're taking up real estate that no one cares to read. Now, a couple things about references. Number one, it is okay to mention a reference if it was in fact a referral, meaning, hi, Andy, I'm reaching out to you because I got your name from your best bud, Rob. Okay, like that's okay. That is a that is making a connection of how I'm getting to you. That's okay. Okay. Now, you don't want to provide names of references or any of that stuff for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, sometimes people will take your resume, your cover letter, or whatever. They will look at your reference and they might be needing somebody who is has the background of your reference. They'll start calling them. They do this. Third-party recruiters do this. Employers do this. So don't. Number one, don't give them that. Number two, when you go in, if you start to talk to an organization, you're going to do one of two things. You, some companies will talk to you before you fill in an application. Other companies will have you fill in an application the moment you come into their office. That may or may not be the first interaction, right? Sometimes people say, "What do they say? Hey, let's let's have a phone call. Let's have a video session, right? Okay." When you initially fill in your application, it's going to ask you, please provide references. Okay, now what do you do? First thing here you got to know is, all right, go fill it in, but you want to make a great, great guess as to the best references to speak on your behalf as it relates to that job. Why is this important? You want to make sure you are giving them references that are going to be able to speak to how awesome you are at doing that specific job or in that market or something that's very related to that job or company. Now, at the time that you initially fill that stuff in, you may or may not know who the best references are because you're going to go gather more information and then you're going to figure out that, oh, while the job is this, 
right? I'm managing this project. Really what I need is somebody who can speak to my customer relationship management prowess or my oil and gas experience, even though they didn't know you as a project manager, but they knew you when you worked over at that oil company or something like that. So what you want to do is when you initially fill the, um, the references out, First thing, as you're job searching, make sure that any reference that you would potentially use is aware that you were going to use them as a reference or ask them, say, I want you to know I'm, I'm active or, hey, I'm going in for an interview and I'm going to put you down as a reference. Are you okay with that? You want to put them on alert. That's the first thing. Then go ahead and fill them in on the application. Fill them in, but on the application, make a note or make a note to the recruiter or the hiring official or the HR person or whoever. Please do not contact my re my references until you let me know that you're going to contact them. Okay, I'm conducting a private job search, and I just want to make sure that right that I I can speak to them or whatever. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure they don't call anybody until you alert them. Then, as you go through the process, as you get down to the end, the only time this is going to matter is if they're about to give you an offer. They're going to say, "Hey, Ashley, we need your references." You're going to say. Okay, I gave you three references on the application. You can go call those people. Okay, that's fine. Or I gave you three references on the application, but there's since since we've gone through this process, I've discovered that you know my oil and gas expertise is going to be so important for you to understand. I would like to trade out one of those references for somebody I worked at, at, over at British Petroleum or something like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna swap them. No problem. Here's the three references I want you to call to call. Somebody might say, hey, Ashley, we noticed that in, when you filled out the application, you gave us a supervisor, a peer, and a, and a staff member. We would like three supervisors. Okay, no problem. I'll swap those out, right? Like You need to be ready for all of that. And the point is, number one, employers are terrible at reference checking, meaning they don't really know how to do this. They're going to call up these three people, and you better have somebody who's going to say something nice about you. Okay, most recruiters, HR people, hiring officials are not trained at eliciting information from people who are undoubtedly going to say something nice about you. Okay, so what you want to make sure that you're doing is you, you've got a handful of, of uh, references of all kinds. And it, sometimes they say, can you give us a client? Can you give us a teammate? Can you give us somebody you managed? Can you give us a boss? Can you give us a whatever? Internal customer. So you want to make sure that you recognize the types of, of references that you need. Then when you get down to the end, you want to make sure that you call your references again and say, hey, they're going to be calling you. Please promptly return the call. Make sure that you're getting back to them. So this is important that you understand all these dynamics. And while in many cases, references are for some companies an afterthought. Some companies don't even do them. Some companies hire other companies to go out and make the phone calls because they don't want to waste their time because they know it's a waste of time, but somebody's making them do it. That kind of thing. You never know what you're going to get, but I want you to be ready for all those scenarios. You probably never thought this was this complicated, right? This is what happens. This is what happens. So be ready. Make sure that your references are alerted and use the right ones that are going to give you the best advantage. And you want to make sure it's going to be the ones that can give them additional information about how awesome you are. And the more they can speak to how you align to the role, that's the best reference. You don't want somebody who's just going to talk about how great you are in general. We know that. We know you're great. See it from that smile. All right. Hope that helped. Rachel Gibbs. Ah. So I'm not exactly in Lake Zurich, uh, but that's where the post office box is. It's like next door. Mm. Nadia, my muse, just had a virtual interview yesterday with my dream company and your tips about talking to the webcam was really helpful. Nadia, that's great. I, I remember you asking me a months ago about changing careers, going back to school, and for any of you who have not seen Nadia's video, you should really check it out. Maybe Stacy can put it in the, uh, <laughs> the chat. <laughs> Great to have you. Maxim, a boot camper, how you doing from Hamburg? Um, this is another thing. There are, um, while Maxim is a boot camper and he has access to this private uh, session on interviewing where I focused on interrogating small to mid-sized companies. 
Uh, I want to pull this up, and I'm glad it, it, it saved your interview today, buddy. I really am happy for you. are a great dude. Uh, but for the rest of you, if you need um, a little bit of help, check out my YouTube channel and Oh, uh, wait, I don't know. Stacy. I don't know if it's on YouTube or if it's on Instagram, but the acid test for the startups, maybe you can uh, pop that video in the, in the, in the chat. If it's, uh, if it's, I don't think it's on YouTube. I think it's, I think it's a, an IGTV one, but maybe, maybe pop that one up there. Pop the one up there with Audrey, the one we did with Audrey. That's a, that's a good one for this crew. Up, oh, mom. How you doing? Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. So, going to be so great. All right, Laura Cobb. Let's see. All right, my dear. What do we got here? All right, question contacted by a recruiter about an interview. Don't remember submitting my resume. Uh, virtual group interview yesterday, remote work, values align, seems great. They'll get in touch with me. Is this normal? Okay, It so virtual group interview, it's now the new normal. Uh, a remote work, that's cool, uh, right? I, I'm assuming you're asking me about you don't remember submitting your resume. Now, two things. Number one, for any of you, you should diligently keep track. Laura, I'm not saying you did this. I'm just saying keep track of where you sent your stuff. So it's not just where did I send it. It's, okay, I targeted the boss. I targeted the recruiter. I sent a message to HR. I tried to network with the team member. It, right, this company, this person, on this date, here's the version of the resume if you have multiple, which I hope you don't, but if you do, here's the version of the resume I sent, here's the cover letter I sent, here's when I'm gonna follow up with them, and so on. If you are losing track of any of that, that's a no-no. So if somebody contacts you, you need to remember when you uh, reached out to them, submitted your resume, or whatever. Now. If you'd given your resume to a third-party recruiter, I'm guessing, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a third-party recruiter. I'm guessing it's not because if, if, if you just went right into the interview, then I'm, I'm assuming that you would have contacted that recruiter directly or filled your, uh, an application or put your resume in the applicant tracking system. If the recruiter reached out to you a while ago, and you had a quick exchange or went back and forth, or maybe what happened is you sent the resume to the corporate recruiter, two months went by, now things are picking up again, the pandemic is calming down a little bit, it's for a remote job, they're starting to hire again, they picked it back up and you simply forgot, that's possible too. But not knowing the situation, this could be just totally normal and you just forgot. So I don't I don't really know how to respond to that if if, you're telling me that you never submitted a resume, I would find that hard to believe. That either you didn't submit it, that you actually did, or you gave it to a recruiter and you said, hey, it's okay for you to circulate my resume. But in that case, the third party recruiter would have contacted you back. So it's hard to, to say, Laura, but uh, all that is all kinds of fine with me. Um, Tabasco Kitten. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, anybody. Uh, wait, so first off, thank you for coming. And for anybody, I'm gonna try to get through as many questions as I can today. Uh, if I have a like bullseye video that's on the YouTube channel already, please go with me that I'm just gonna refer you to that because it'll give me a chance to, to package up some stuff where I, I might not have a video created for people. So Tabasco Kitten, husband got contacted for an open position by a third party recruiter. They have a phone conversation planned for this evening. What to expect out of that conversation and what to ask. All you need to do is tell your husband to watch my video on working with executive recruiters and third party search firms. It will be time well spent. It's all in there for you. MCK, great to have you. My boot camper. And let's see, what do we got here? Beth. I've identified a very desirable company who actually has two positions open that I'm qualified for best tactics to handle this. I thought I answered this one for you, but if I didn't, it's okay to just, you, 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 got, uh, you, you got two open positions. If you want to contact that recruiter, I, first thing is, if you, if you found the position, I would try to find the boss, okay? That's the first thing. 
and then I would go the boss hunting route. And you could even mention, I noticed you have a couple of positions. If these positions are wildly different, which they should not be, because you don't want to give off the impression that you're 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 erratic in your behavior. So you target the boss and you say, you know, I'm interested in this position. Uh, and if the positions are, are darn close, say I noticed you had a couple positions that I could be a fit for. That's one way to handle it. You target the recruiter. That's another way to handle it. Okay. The other option, which I don't love, is if you go through the applicant tracking system, pick the one that you think is most in alignment with you and what you what you are best suited to do. And then in your cover letter, you can you can also say, I you know I'm interested in this position or 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 any others that you find suitable or you think I'd be suitable for, or you could even mention the other one. I also noticed. Uh, I'm open to either position or something like that and then close it up. But that's that's totally okay to do. It really is. I I get I get um I get a little more skittish Beth if if they're like two totally different types of positions. Like wh- what's your forte? And that's not the way you want to introduce yourself. It's one thing, folks, Beth, this is a good one. Folks, it it's not a terrible thing to apply for two positions. I have a video out there about, is it okay? Literally, is it okay? Actually, Stace, can we add that one? Is it okay to apply to multiple positions at the same company? I believe that's the title of the video. It is okay if they're dang similar. If they're wildly different, it's one thing if you're in an interviewing process and the employer says, hey, Beth, you know what? I see you got this these other skills here too. I didn't realize that. Um, and and it somehow comes up that there's this other position and you might be a fit and then you start discussing it. That's one thing. But I don't love simultaneously trying to apply to two positions that are not very similar. Now, if you apply to one and some weeks goes by, you try to follow up, you haven't heard anything, and then you want to go apply to the other one, I'm okay with that too because then what's happening is maybe your resume didn't pass whether it's the applicant tracking system or the sniff test or whatever they did. And then over here, maybe you got a better shot. But I leave that to you. And without seeing the, without knowing your exact resume, without knowing the exact company or the positions, it's hard to say. But I think I covered all those. If I didn't, see you tomorrow and let me know. Oh my God, that's awesome. Okay, wait, is it Jania? Uh, Yes, you did ask me about the lie detector test and I got the job at the PD all as well. Can we give her a huge shout out? Because lie detector tests, I don't care if you're the most honest person in the world, those are nerve wracking. God love it. Kimberly Goldman started a new job in pharma with a small diabetes company. I fear for the future of my new company. An op arose in my previous field. I have five years. Okay, wait, this is great. Let's get this up here. This is a question. Uh, Started a new job in pharma with a diabetes company. I fear for the future of my new company. An op arose in my previous field. I have five years of experience and strong surgical reference. Should I explore? Yes. Your and this is not just for Kimberly, but any of you, I will always say this. This is, I'm an, I can say this once and I know only so many of you are going to, are going to actually, you know, 217, you're going to hear me say this, but I'm telling you this and I will say this every single time. Should I explore? Yes. If you want to, you should. Now you might have advantages or disadvantages based on your backgrounds and all that, but I want you to explore. Should I switch jobs? I don't care what's happening in the world. I don't care if the world is blowing up, if we're in the middle of a pandemic, or if the stock market is rising and the employment market is rising. If you need to change jobs, or you're unhappy, or you want to pursue a new field, and you want to know what I think, I'm going to say, go for it. I will never say, don't try. I won't. I might say, you have a tall order. Here's what you need to do. But I will always say, do it. So, do it. Kimberly and good luck. Give let's give her good luck. All right, my boot camper, what do I got here? All right. Job search challenge. If they say no, thank you. You reply, can you refer me? Do you know anyone else? Etc. And they say no again. How do you proceed? Do you drop it or reply again? I drop it at that point. So here's what I would tell you. 
I am really big on okay, so wait, so let's let let's 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 start. The best salespeople in the world, they they have a skill where they are in a quality. They are persistent, they follow up, they are organized, right? They're making sure that they're they have attention to detail and they're follow right they're following up appropriately at the right frequencies and so forth that's what you are now you're a sales per- actually you're a marketer and then a salesperson of yourself and your skills now the smartest sales people or marketers are the ones who channel all their efforts into finding the right prospects and then doing doing right by investing energy in speaking with them, convincing them, following up, and so forth. What most of you job seekers are encountering right now, whether you're working my job search challenge or whether you're doing other routes, is you are running into walls as you continually reach out to people, to which I would say, if somebody is not receptive to hiring you, don't waste your time. If somebody is not willing to give you a chance, don't waste your time. Your time between that and chasing it and going and trying to find somebody who will be opening and open and welcoming and teach you what they need to teach you or take a chance on somebody with your qualities and your skills, that's what you that's what you want to do. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to talk to somebody to convince them to jump into one of my programs if they don't believe in buying online training. If then if it becomes a which career coach do I want, then they're a buyer. Then I have to show them why I'm the right one. Just like when the company asks you, why should we hire you? I do the same thing with you all, right? Same kind of thing. So my, my, my suggestion here is it's okay to be sending out a lot of initial emails. And while I would recommend that if you were organized and you were sending out the right number, which was manageable, you would be able to follow up with everybody in seven days and then 14 more days and so on. But in this crazy, wacky time that we're in right now, you're better off just continually sending the messages out each day and then, and then, um, and, and then following up only with the ones that you truly desire, like really, really high, like really want to work there. Then if they get back to you and they say, no, I don't, just say, okay, I thank you again for responding to me. Um, I, you know, I, obviously I reached out to you because I'd really like to, you know, connect with you. Um, I'll, you know, I'll follow up with you in a few months or something like that and just leave it alone. And here's one other thing to kind of cap this off. We don't know what's happening with anybody at any moment in time. Uh, you might email me and say, Andy, I'd love to come and work at Mile Walk. And I might say, you know what? That's so awesome. We're, we're full right now. And I couldn't, you know, I, I, I don't have enough time to hire anybody else. or I don't have enough money to hire anybody else. Or we're not there yet or whatever. It has nothing to do with you. And then a month goes by and all of a sudden somebody leaves or we decide we're going to initiate that project early or whatever. And then time changes. Now, what's not going to happen in most cases is I'm not just going to reach back out to you and say, oh, I remember I had that, like a month ago, I had that great conversation with so-and-so. It, the mind isn't going to work that way. Now, some people will hang on to that, but most won't. So then that's where the follow-up comes in. And then if you are in, on top of mind, I remember. Where do you think this works? Social media. I know who comments on my stuff. I comment back. Don't don't you get a response from me virtually every time? That's me with my phone going boop, 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 response. I know I see if I see your picture, that's even another anchor for me. Then you send me a message, I'm, there's a greater likelihood I'm going to respond. Right? Like that kind of stuff because it's top of mind. Right? Who's supportive, who's not. Then I get these flyers off from people I don't know at all. I don't know who that is. I've never seen them before and now they send me this long man want help. It's the same kind of thing when you're following up. Job search challenge or any other medium doesn't make any difference. All that stuff matters. The touch points matter. But in this particular case for you all, you're better off spending time, um, not chasing is not the right word, but pursuing uh, opportunities where people w- will be receptive. So now you know that that might not be it or you have to shelve it. So that's what I would do. It's okay. Be, be persistent to the, to, you know, to the right extent. David Francis... Okay, you're going to love this answer, my friend. All right, David Francis, and I'm not being funny. 
Annie, what is your best advice in recruiter shopping? I'm an enterprise risk manager. Now, if you mean third-party recruiter shopping, my best advice is don't waste one second pursuing them. I'm not kidding you. It's not worth your time. It really is not. And I know you're in my boot camp and I do talk about executive recruiters in module three and also in the executive uh, specialty section. Okay, so check that out. You can also check out that uh, video I just mentioned uh, to Tabasco Kitten, I think it was, or somebody about or her husband or maybe that was her. I don't know. I can't remember. But um, about watching you know, how to work with executive recruiters and third-party search firms. If you are talking about recruiter shopping for corporate recruiters, that's nothing different than targeting companies. So I hope that helps. And if I missed the mark there or you want to clarify, please do. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Debbie B, glad you're a boot camper too. Love to have you. And I know I've got your story and I will I will read it before tomorrow. I have like four hours planned today to read stories. All right, Zippy Entertainment. I had a phone interview yesterday with a corporate recruiter. I used your negotiation statement from your video and she did not like it, but she accepted it. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm moving on. Wait, I don't, I don't know how many of these you got here. I'm moving on my second phone interview. Also, she asked to tell me about her resume. I used your script. Man, I blew her away. Also, I have notes. Can I take them into the interview? Let's go with this third part. Okay, Zippy and everyone. Notes should accompany you everywhere. Never leave home without it. Never get on a phone interview without them. Never get on a video interview without them. However, however, how you use your notes, there's two dimensions here. If they are notes that you have prepared, so there's different kind of notes you take, right? There's notes I prepared to package my interview responses. Never look at those, ever. You never want to look to a script to respond to an interview. I'm not even going to go into any more detail on that. Don't do it. Second thing is I created notes because during the discussions, you said something that I wanted to capture. Now, if I'm asking you questions, right, phone interview, video interview, in-person interview, panel interview, doesn't make any difference, and I'm you're talking to me, right? I'm the candidate. I'm making my notes. Oh, you said something interesting. You jot your note down in whatever shorthand you want to put it in just so that you retain the information or you're reminding yourself that you need to ask them something but don't want to interrupt them, okay? Now, I might collect all that during an interview and I might not get to stop you or I might determine that the note I took is not nearly as important as me getting this other question answered, okay? So... I, I might get it later. Those kind of notes bring back or bring to the next phone interview or video interview or whatever. Say, hey, you know, you mentioned something the other day and I, you know, I jotted it down. It was so important because I wanted to make sure I followed up on this. Or, you know, Susie mentioned something when I was on the phone with her. I thought it would be really good to ask you about this, right? If you are using them to refer back to something that you previously talked about, gold. Okay, third kind. The notes you take related to the questions you want to ask. So these may or may not be notes. Maybe they're your list of questions. Maybe it's a spreadsheet. Maybe it's a Word document. Maybe it's a legal pad or whatever. It should not be your phone or your iPad or your computer or anything where you have to look at a screen. Paper. You can type it or you can write it, but print it. Bring that in. Then if they say, hey, Andy, do you have any questions for me? I do. As a matter of fact, glance at your thing. Don't read the question to them. Glance at it. Okay, I know what that question is. Hey, I wanted to ask you about. Great. Take your notes. Go down. I wanted to ask you about. I wanted to ask you about and go through them. Okay? But you, that is okay. So you prepped and you wrote out things that, about you know your stories and things you want to remember. Don't ever refer to those. If they're notes that you made in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the dialogue... You can jot those down, you bring those in. If they were notes that you made in pre preparation for questions you want to ask, bring those in. Okay, it's okay. Have paper. Okay, why don't you want screens? Multiple reasons. Number one, you never, 
ever under any circumstance want to bring anything in that can cause any kind of distraction to you or them. You forgot to silence the alarms. The phone rings, right? You're looking at a you're you're looking at a uh, your your phone or your iPad and your wife texts you. Okay, like don't don't do any of that stuff. Second thing is they don't know what you're looking at. They might think you're not paying attention to them. Okay, so you just don't chance that. Okay, just don't chance that at all. Paper is the way to go. So you can type it out and then print the paper, or you can handwrite it out and print it. It doesn't make any difference, but just don't don't use an electronic device. It's a big, big mistake. Big mistake. And when you are on a video interview, let's go you one further as a bonus tip here. When you're on a video interview, do not, do not put your stuff in the screen. Why? It might look like, well, it's easier. Look, there's everything right there. The problem is what happens if all of a sudden you lose your video, but audio work. And don't, this happens. I do Zoom sessions every day with one, people in my one-on-one -on -one coaching. It, half the time, they can't get their video or audio to work. Okay, but we keep, like, we, we're, we keep going. We figure out a way. They're dialing in the phone. They're doing whatever. You just never know. You do not want to rely on technology. Not to mention, again, I don't want to see things flashing on the screen or whatever. They might not be able to see it. But still, it could distract you. Okay, right now on my machine, okay, there's the operating software, there's the YouTube thing, so I can make sure that there we go, there's the guy, and I can see him moving and everything looks like there's a green light there, it tells me everything's working. I have a communication with my team because they got to tell me, Andy, you forgot something or whatever, but everything else is shut. Okay, I, I make sure that the mic audio, I can see that's working, so everything is, is only for purposes to make sure that this works. Okay, you need to make sure that you're not doing anything to distract you. Okay, and, and so I just, I, but notes are very important. And as a matter of fact, I kind of get a little bummed when people don't take notes. You're never going to remember everything I tell you. You won't. You won't. So do it. It's, it's really a great one. That's, I, and, and, and Zippy, I'm glad that things went well. I'm glad you are blowing them away, and I'm, I'm wishing you lots of luck. Okay. Oh, wait, I think I got a boot camper here. I sure do. Ranj, how you doing? I recently started networking with peeps in the space. I want to move, uh, I want to move design ops and notice many full-timers, 10 to 15 years in top companies laid off. Should I rethink my job function? No, no, no. Go get them. All right. Let's see, what's this, aced? How, I don't know how you pronounce that, Aisty? Uh Succeeded through the lengthy process of interviews, but they came with an offer below the market rate cause one, it is a remote job. I don't know if there are other, uh, other, oh wait, here we go. Remote job. They know where I currently live and the cost of living is less Although my 15 plus years of experience and qualifications are all from the UK, it's a US company and their staff is working remotely. Where is, where's the ultimate question? I'm assuming you're going to ask me what I think of all of that. I'm not sure where, uh, I'm not sure where your ultimate, ultimate question is, but I'm going to point you back to the negotiation playlist that I have on my YouTube channel. I don't think you are in my premium program. So check out the salary negotiation playlist. There are a number of tactics there that will that will help you without a doubt. All right. Milton Perez, hey, didn't know that. I'm not sure what that was. Charles Moy, Marilyn, brand new. Can we give Charles Moy a, a, a first timer hug? Give him a first timer hug. Put the hands together or whatever that little emoji is. Um, you know, the high, the high 10 and all that good stuff. Brand new software QA manager currently on furlough. And here's the question. Should I mention I'm on furlough during an interview? Or do you have a video on this? Thank you for asking me that. Yes, you should. Charles and everybody, like we do this all the time. Anytime that you have a discoverable situation that is 
pertinent. Okay, I'm not talking about I have a medical condition which I don't want to disclose, which is fine. It's not going to prevent. You do not need to bring that stuff up. But if you are furloughed, if you recently got let go, if you decided to leave your company on your own, you're in between jobs and any of that stuff, you should tell them. And it's okay to say, I'm furloughed. Uh, you know, this COVID thing is hit or, hey, uh, I'm furloughed. My company just let 4,000 people go because they decided to dismantle this arm. It's not, no longer strategic. They're outsourcing this and that to this other country, whatever the reason. If you are furloughed, true furloughed, you're, you, you're, you have to realize what that is. Generally, I'm assuming that you truly mean furloughed, like technically. You are furloughed, meaning you are temporarily unemployed, but not let go. Meaning the company says, we are furloughing you pending whatever, uh, different events, an event, we're going to bring you back. We, we've not officially let you go yet. Then there is, I was laid off. Okay, if I was laid off, that means you and a group of others were laid off for a reason. It's like misery loves company. That's also easy to explain. I and everybody else in this group have been let go. Okay, that's okay. That's not even the worst. It really is not. It would feel painful to you. Now, if you were surgically fired, then we're going to get into a whole different scheme because that was, boop, you did something misbehaved, lack of performance or whatever, but it was specific to you. You're going to have to explain that one. But if you're furloughed, you just say it. I'm furloughed right now. Don't know when I'm going back. So I'm looking for another job, right? That's okay. Don't, and don't be, like if your resume says company A, X, Y, Z to present, that's okay. You get in that interview or you talk to that recruiter, you just say, hey, I want to let you know, you know, just last week, I just, you know, we just got let go. I got to update my paperwork, but it's not official yet. So we're, I'm still basically still connected to the company. You know, you do one of those, but definitely I'm always going to say, be honest, especially if it's discoverable. And why do you not want to lie about this? They're going to do a background check. They're going to eventually verify your employment. It's like getting a loan. Okay. And all your companies are going to say is, yep, that's right. It's all good. So, um, so no, be honest there. Hope that helps. And yes, join me on Instagram. <laughs> Stay some putting you up. Andrew LaCivita. I'm fun guy on Instagram. I show you pictures of my dogs, but mostly like 90% of it is videos about job searching and motivational stuff. And it's inspirational quotes twice daily. All right. Let's see. Veronica, hi. John Paul. All right, let's get this up here. Looks like you're hard at work. Oh, that's Harley. So my wife's not home right now. because She's at the pool with her sister. Because uh, that's the life of a teacher. She's the hardest working te teacher I know. That, that little dog, Harley. So my whole office is like all windows and there's a sunroom. That's all windows. So I pray at 11 o'clock when I get on the show that my neighbor doesn't come out and start, you know, fiddling around with his, his bushes and his weeds and his garden or whatever because my dog, who can't hear but can see, sees a blob moving and then that's what happens. So, but that's a little behind the scenes. <laughs> All right, John Paul, when listing skills on my resume, should I include LAPS professional certifications? Network engineer, 22 years experience, includes several now lab certifications. I would just put a certifications section at the bottom of your resume in edu near education. You could put education and certifications. You could have education. Then you could have a separate section that says technical skills and certifications. Um, you, could, you could do anything you want. You put technical skills and current and prior certifications or whatever. Then, then what I would do and you could list those because at one point you were certified. You might not have continued to do the every year, every other year, every what fifth year, um, you know, upkeep and education and retesting and all that other stuff. But what you could do is then up at the top in the career profile, you can also put, uh, if you go to the Andy Lasavita School of Resume Writing, the second paragraph of the career profile is your core competencies. It's where you list your, your business functions, your hardcore technical skills, and anything for the cheap seats. And you put in there, you know, um, 
throughout career have held certifications in. Something like that, right? And if, if that's important, that you have a CCIE certification as a network engineer or CCVP or CCNE or what CCNA or whatever it was, and you, you know, it's lapsed, you could do that. Um, if, if, if you don't want to do that and you just want to leave them at the bottom, that's cool too. If you're pursuing recertification, you could say, you know, targeting recertification of CCIE and VP, whatever, and so on. You do that. Just, it's okay. If you feel that's going to get, say, my view, you had a certification at one point. If it's a few years old and it's lapsed, I really don't care. I really don't. Like you, you can do it, right? That's how I think. Um, this is an interesting one and a very tough one. It really is. Medina, uh, hi Andy, is it possible for graduates, international uh, students to find a job in a foreign country where they graduated during this COVID time? Should a strategy be any different? I don't know if you mean, you know, I'm in a foreign country because I went to school studying international whatever business or whatever it was you were doing. I'm always a fan of where do you want your home base to be? Return to home, stay where you are, go to a third place, right? If I'm a student, this is, okay, I'm gonna be really clear. I'm talking about students, not professionals who are 40 and wanna change you know, careers and lives. If I'm a student, I get home, wherever that is, and I look there. And then you might have other complications like visa issues or whatever. I go anchor somewhere and then focus. That's, I mean, if you're in the U.S. and you're a U.S. citizen and you're in Chicago land where I live and you want to search the U.S. because you can just go anywhere, that's fine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about literally changing countries, right? So like for me to go to the U.K. or Australia or Asia or Canada or Mexico or wherever, but I I would try to get to where I I, I wanted to live and then I don't know if you're moving like you know if, if you're in Europe and you're just moving between the European countries you know that's one issue if you, you have to move countries and you can't get a work visa that's a different issue sometimes students have um, and I'm not sure what the exact visa is that some students can get visas where they can carry into a few years where they can work or they have to continue to go to school or something like that I don't know what all the parameters are but my default is get to the home base and, and go there and, and, and work from there. Kari, how you doing? Rob, good to see you, man. And Karen from Turkey, Istanbul. Can you, can you see this? Can you see this right here? This and that eye, can you see the eye? This guy right here, the evil eye that protects me. And these mats that are my desk pads came all the way from Istanbul. I had them made because <laughs> i found this lovely couple on i don't know the internets and i just loved them so much and i i i love them so how about that for a little trivia all right greetings from istanbul and they were from turkey uh have been have benefited a lot from your videos during my process now i have a question i guess i'm a final short list but my question is waiting for another round but what do you suggest me to do uh, during this process to express my eagerness again? Okay, so great question. Uh, we're, we're waiting, right? And so I there's just a little maintenance to the way that you wait, okay? So I, I, I put in my application, my resume, whatever. The recruiter got back to me. Uh, Karen, you're, 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 you're shortlisted. We're waiting to... Uh, to, to to get the you know to get the rounds going. So one of the things that I always mention is whenever you are about to follow up, you always want to know well when are you going to have a decision. So if you're in an interview, when when are you going to have a decision by? What are the next steps? And who will I hear from? Okay, those three pieces of information. Now, if you submitted your resume and they got back and they say, hey, you're on a short list. Awesome. When will the short list? When? Are you targeting to have the shortlist finalized uh, so that I understand when you might contact me? That's that's a fair question. If I say to you, oh, okay, 
we should know that within two weeks. That's one thing. You give me the two weeks. You give me a couple extra days. Say, I just want to check back in, express my interest. I'm very excited about the opportunity to pursue this with you. Um, wanted to know if there was any update. That's it. Okay. That's just, that's it. You've expressed your interest. They already got your credentials. They don't really know you yet. You go about it that way. If you ask me and I say, you know what? I'm working through, uh, I'm the recruiter. I'm working through a number of different job candidates. I will call you uh, when when we're ready to move. I don't know when that will be. You got to give me a week or two or something like that. I would be patient and try to let them work through it. And then same thing. Give me a couple weeks, then email me and say, hey, I, I really enjoyed our conversation a couple weeks ago or our email exchange or whatever it might be if you actually had one or thank you for sending me that a couple of weeks ago. I thought I would, I just wanted to express my, it's been a couple of weeks now. I want to express my interest in wondering when you might, um, when you might have a decision about moving forward or something like that. You just want to keep it going. What you don't want to do, big mistake, is send them a lot of info. You don't. You really don't. No one wants to read a ton more. They're, they're trying to figure it out. All you're doing is you're saying, hey, I'm politely giving you a tap on the shoulder and I want to let you know I'm still interested. That's it. That's all I would do. And it's difficult uh, to know exactly how long I'd wait if you don't know exactly how long they said they would take. But you get the, you get the gist. Rachel Gibbs. Uh, actually, before I get to Rachel, I want to... Ah, oh, it's 12.15 already? Jeez. Wait, you, I thought it was like 11.30. <laughs> By the way, that is what focus is about. I'm like, I'm zoned in on you guys. Man, I don't have any concept of the clock. Uh, but I, I, I do, I, I do, I do want to drink my tea. Mm. All right, I mentioned before, if you didn't get the memo... The job interview mastery workshop that we just did that was absolutely a zipping blast uh, was, was last couple of weeks. It's all packaged up. It is rolled in to my job search boot camp is a freebie if you if you get into the boot camp. And we will give you the $100 off. The special ended. It's selling for $597, but if you email me, I, I like to give you a break. Okay, so just email me at support. Now, if you don't want to get the full service package, uh, we have the job interview mastery, the interview intervention course, which is normally $300, the interview mastery, which we've estimated at $100, the job search bootcamp interviewing session, which is $119, and a few other goodies that we've thrown all together, the ebook of the ebook and the audio book of this, and then the other ebooks and other assets that go along with the interview intervention course. And all of that, like nearly 600 bucks, is $97. It ends tomorrow, and I'm not going to be as forgiven on that one. It's, it's done, it's done. We're packing that up, and we're moving on to other things because we've got other things we got to focus on. But that special is good until tomorrow night. And if, you're, if you signed up, not, every, not all of you got the message on this. We only sent the message in an email to people who signed up for the Job Interview Mastery Workshop. So I was trying to save a lot of you from all those extra emails that alert you to this opportunity. But if you are interested and you're not getting the messages about this, email us at support and we'll send you the link. I'm guessing, I haven't looked at the chat. Um, I'm guessing Kara or Stacey or somebody's put the, the link in the chat. But you can always email us at support at malwalk.com if you're not sure. And a lot of, like this interview collection, this package, it's not on the website. You can't get this anywhere else but in but interacting with me directly. So a lot of the stuff that we package up like this when we run specials, I, you know, there's no website for that, right? It's just, it, it's, it's you and me. So I hope that helps and I hope you take me up on it. It's a really great package. And here again, um, if you pay the $97, at any point in the future, if you decide you want to get into my job search boot camp, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take that $97 off uh, the rest, so then it will be $400 more. All right. Rachel Gibbs. Let's see what do you got here. I've applied for a role in February and had no feedback or rejection. The role is still open, and I'm 100% match. Should I contact the hiring manager and try and push my details forward again? When do I take no? Okay. So, Rachel, yes, definitely, as in, hands down, the minute you hang up on me, hopefully when the show's over, you reach back to the 
to the hiring official. Now, you said you applied for a role. If you applied through the applicant tracking system, not to be funny, you, you probably weren't even noticed. Now, I don't know exactly how you applied because you said, should I contact the hiring manager to try and push my details forward again? I don't know that you contacted the hiring manager the first time. So what are the combinations here? You applied at the applicant tracking system. If, if, if they didn't get back to me in like two days, in the app from the app, I would have sent the e- I would have targeted somebody, the recruiter, the HR of, uh, official, or the hirer, the hiring official. I would have went right in. If if you did target them and there was no response whatsoever, I would I would go back like nothing happened, like like you'd never t- just say, hey, I'm I, I right, I'm a I'm a hundred percent match for this role. Now I'd be a little careful about saying that because you might think you're a hundred percent match. I don't know if you're a hundred percent match. You certainly don't know if you're a hundred percent match. What you're saying is, I feel like I have a hundred percent of their requirements satisfied. Match is not about requirement satisfaction. It is about alignment to culture, chemistry, fit, value, and so on. So yes, you can check the lists. You can check check off the, the items on the list in the job description, but that does not make you a 100% match for the company. There's so much more that goes into that. Neither of you will know that. You won't even know if they're 100% match for you until you get in and start talking to them. So I go in like nothing ever happened. Now, I'll tell you, I mean, February it was open. Let's say, I don't know if you're, I'm assuming you're in the U.S. I don't know. Well, I only have a 48% chance of being right on that. Um, let's say, uh, you know, you're in the U.S. and, you know, COVID really became prevalent, uh, although it, it hit us earlier, not until the middle of March, which is when we really started shutting down. Maybe they shut down. Maybe their priorities got rearranged. Either way, I'm telling you to go and pretend like you never even tried it. I, f- folks, let me, and I, 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 want, I, want one, I want to throw one more thing in here. This book, this book, I wrote in 2011. Okay, 2011. I re-released it in 2018 like no one ever saw it. Okay, and all the principles in here will be viable forever. Tweaks here and there, but forever. These principles will never go out of style. Your, your value that you can bring to people, you, lots of times when you're in doubt and you're not sure what to do, my suggestion to you is going to be re-release yourself like no one ever saw you the first time. Most people didn't, and even the ones that did didn't hear it or can't remember it. Okay, so I re-released this book uh, literally, literally six years, almost to the date after it was published. So 2018, it came out in 2012. Nearly six years, just like no one saw it. And then I started giving it away, like literally physically giving it away like I do now. And now I'll, now hundreds of thousands of people have it. And so, you know, that's, that goes for you. There's something in your life that's like this and related to work. And, and I, I want you to know things like this. Apply to an applicant tracking system. A couple days go by, no one's done anything. Go in like you never did it before. You don't need to go explaining yourself like, oh, I applied and I didn't get any. No, just go right in. Go right in like they never saw you the first time. When in doubt, like they never saw you the first time. It's true. Go get them. Tammy Chen, how you doing? Raji, great. First timer, warming up to this. Well, great, great to have you. Zipping on by Andrea, first timer. We've got a lot of first timers. Hey. I see some of you are re-entering your, your uh, oh, wait, Dan, let's get Dan out. Dan, you're not just a boot camper, you're a leader too. By the way, my boot campers, uh, I still had a bunch of people here. Yeah, my boot campers, a little special, little special thing for you. Uh, I have a leadership monthly subscription. For those of you that do not know this, I have a leadership monthly subscription. It is about high performance, developing leadership qualities, and it is about 
just career aspirations, career advancements. So the job search boot camp and like interview intervention, all these other things are related to helping you find your job. My leadership, and that's those are like usually one-time enrollments. My leadership program is an ongoing monthly subscription where I coach you every month. That's all about self-help, high performance, leadership development, and all that good stuff. And a lot of my boot campers are in the leadership program, but a lot of them are not. So starting on Saturday, everybody who's in my boot camp is getting a free week pass to all the stuff in my leadership program. So like a, a little trial and only available to boot campers and I shot you a special video message this morning uh, and Dan I hope you are enjoying both of those programs for anybody who's not who's in the boot camp who's not in the leadership program you're gonna get a real good look at it uh, to help you and enhance your job search too because a lot of the stuff that's in there's really uh, it, it double dips but it's it's really it's great to have you in both but for anybody who's not who's in my boot camp give that it will give that a try all right, scheduled for a video interview today with the hiring manager, but due to family emergency, oh goodness, a parent passed away. So sorry to hear that his, oh wait, I'm gonna sort of, if you, your parent passed away, I'm assuming that this is not you. Um, I'm hoping it's not you, right? Uh, family emergency interview has been rescheduled. Friend at the company shared the details about the family emergency, not the recruiter. Next week during the video interview, would it be appropriate to share my condolences for his loss? It would not be. It would not be. Do not do that unless the recruiter explains to you that um, that that it was a personal family emergency. I, I believe me, I'm about the most sensitive person as far an empathetic person as far as anything happening to anybody in their life. Yeah, I might give it to you straight advice wise, but believe me, I got a, the, about the softest heart ever. So um, I would not do that because I just uh, I, I don't think it would be appropriate. Now, if somehow this comes up and the recruiter shares it or or you know, your friend talks to the recruiter and says, hey, I mentioned to Dan that, and, and it comes out that you know, that's different. But I would not, I would not just bring that up. I would, I would, I would, I, I really wouldn't. I, I wouldn't about anything, like anything. If, if it is not commonly in the know, then don't say anything. They might want to keep it private. You don't know this person. You don't know how they're going to react. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, this could be too. Like everybody responds to trauma differently. This person might be doing a wonderful job blocking it out and focusing on you during the interview session. And then you bring this, you bring that up. My parents, one of my parents died. I, you'd lose me. Like I, I would now be thinking about them. Okay. And, and so you don't want to do that. So don't do anything that's disruptive. Now, if it comes up and he, and, and the person says, Hey, I'm so sorry uh, my 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 parent passed away, my mom, my dad, whatever, and that's why I had to reschedule. Then, obviously, you jump on it and you say, "I'm so so sorry for your loss." I'm prob I'm you know you might even say I'm I'm, I'm surprised you're even back, but uh, but anyway, that's how I would do that. I would just be really careful about that. Honest to goodness, because you just don't know. Laura Cobb, you don't have to record it. It's recorded for you and it'll stay up there. <laughs> All right. I think some of these guys did. I'm just zipping down. I'm wondering if, if some of you are re entering your, your questions or. A lot of. Yeah, I think some of you guys are re-entering, so I, I I think I'm caught up. Kara, let me know. I, I, I think I'm you know zipping right along. I, I'm, I'm looking. At, I'm seeing some of these twice. DB, how do I explain my reason for leaving? I suspected a significant layoff and was offered early retirement, which was better than severance. So my exit was voluntary. Okay, this I love. The question, because this happens quite a bit. DB, how do I explain my reason for leaving? I suspected a significant layoff and was offered early retirement, which was better than severance. So my exit was voluntary and seems to look bad. I would not say that. I would call you the smartest person in the room. Seriously, I would. I would. Uh, 
there's nothing wrong at all with saying I was watching my organization, understanding what was happening. The writing was on the wall that there were going to be these mass layoffs. So a number of us were given the opportunity for an early retirement package that was more lucrative. So I, I took it. Because I'm super awesome, confident in my ability to go and get any job I want kind of thing. You don't have to say that. You know what I mean? And that's it. So now I'm looking for my next opportunity. That would be the end of the discussion for, with me. I literally, that would be done in under a minute for sure. Doesn't look bad at all. Go with it. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Nadia, I'm not sure. Did I get this before? Hi. I know you meant hi, Andy. I didn't change my gender. Nadia from New York. Had an interview with my dream startup yesterday. It became apparent to both of us that the senior role is more junior versus my experience. So you're, even the senior role... Uh, wait, senior role is more junior versus my experience. I'm not sure if you're saying, I'm not considering taking it away. Uh, I'm actually, I'm not even, sh I'm not sure I'm getting this. Any advice on leveraging a manager role or higher? They just hired a bunch of related smaller roles. I'm not sure I'm crystal clear on your situation. If I remember you, you were looking to change career, so I'm not sure... Uh, if this is in alignment with what you were doing before, and if I remember, boy, this is really this is really taking me back. You're in like finance or something, and then you wanted to change into um, is that an apparel or something? Boy, I, I bet I'm not that far off on that if I'm off at all. So it's hard to it's hard to uh, I'm not sure if I understand what you're asking me, but I always feel like. Everything is negoti negotiable, and it's a matter of of you convincing them of what of of what you can do. I'm not really sure I'm clear on the situation, Nadia. My apologies there. All right, Raji. Let's see what you got here. During research on companies, how do I how do you learn about their culture before you get an interview if you do not have any friends in there to give you insight? I'm going to point you back to whatever I just said an hour ago about looking at the, uh, literally, I want you to rewind the tape, go all the way back to whoever's question was about, um, you know, how, the, the, how do I get the red flags? Uh, whatever, whatever that was, it's the red flags response that I had earlier. All right, Emery Smith, we got here. Strategy for seeking best accounting, business administration directive, senior in college with changing opportunities, technologies in the coming decade. Creativity and contribution is my focus. I, I, you are, you don't have to do anything differently than any other college graduate. I want you to pick your, your interest and your route and go. And so the best assets for you to check out on my um, on, uh, in the free domain on YouTube is the Career Changer playlist. I know you're a recent college graduate, but aside from the collegiate videos, go to the Career Changer uh, uh, playlist because the, the approach for Career Changers is the same for college students. Take that, take that route, Emory. Good luck with that. Tammy Chen, my boot camper leader and, uh, and fellow head spacer. I had a phone interview with third-party recruiter and attended the job fair, Zoom, today, where COO and HR manager introduced the company in Q&A. Should I send a thank you note to the COO and hiring manager? Yes. Why? No one else will. Tammy, go get them. Richard Alvarez, moving right along. Hi, Andy. I want to go back to my old job that I left two years ago. I had a good working relationship with my former boss. Awesome. Can you provide advice on the best strategy to go back to a past employer? Yes, Richard and everybody, because this happens a ton. 
you send them a good email, you go back to your former boss, and my guess is your former boss will say, when can you start? Hey, former boss, really missing you. You know, it's been a couple years. I, I, I've been thinking I want to come back. I really loved working with you in the company. Is there any possibility we can catch up? That's it. Don't even, if that's your former boss, right? If you had a great relationship, I'm guessing that he or she is going to, is going to take you right back. You do not, we tend to want to overcomplicate these scenarios. The more uh, casual, like what I just said, right? I would hope that somebody that I worked with that was on my team, that I managed, would text me and say, Annie, I want to come back. It's possible? What do you think? Like five words. I don't, you just don't need to overly complicate it. Now, if, it, if then if they reply to you and say, well, what have you been doing since? Or this and that, or what area, you know, what area do you want to get back into? Or what role do you want? Or anything like that. You go back and forth. I would not, I would not send a former boss a really long email. I'm thinking about coming back. You open to that? Can we talk? That's it. Oh, man, Iva, I can't get this up fast enough. Iva, I was 22 year, 21 years old. Started working as an IT and management consultant. And at 39, I opened up a recruitment firm. And I had never recruited a day in my life. And then fast forward, or 38, or whatever it was. And then fast forward, a, you know, a a dozen years and at 50 I made another career change to become an online trainer and coach which I had not done in this capacity this way ever so 50 wasn't too old I'm guessing 40 isn't either go get them whatever you want to do have faith in your ability to figure it out put in the work it won't be easy doesn't have to be easy it needs to be worth it Go get them. All right. Let me see. I'm seeing a couple. Med hot. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got here? If there is no way to find out who the hiring manager is, how do I find a live person to connect with at the company? You do a number of things. You could look for recruiters. You can look for the HR person. If you don't know who the who the hiring manager is, find somebody in authority. If I'm looking for a sales job in a small company and I don't see somebody whose title says, you know, director of sales, VP of sales, or what, I go to the COO. Okay, it just that kind of stuff. Just get somebody in that space. You you got any managerial resource that's close. You got the HR person. You got the recruiters. Uh, any of that stuff. And then if that fails, call them. Who's in charge of, why do you want to know? I want to send them a gift we're marketing for blah, blah. It's a, one time I give you permission to lie kind of thing. All you need to do is find out who they are and then send them a message. I would use anything is fair in getting you to where you want to go. I don't want you to lie about your credentials. But if you fib a little to get the name of the hiring official, go ahead and do that. <laughs> All right. Maxim, my boot camper, what we got here? Should I change thank after interview email every time I write it to a different person from the same company? How probable they forward it to each other and notice the similarity? Awesome question. Here's, okay, if you go to the Andy Lasavita School of Thank You Noting, on page 83 in the interview intervention book is the exact thank you template you should use, Maxim, in that template. There's three pieces to it without going through all the language. You right, you thank them. Then in the middle is the money paragraph, which is where you, you talk about how you're the best fit and value, why you're the strongest candidate. And then the third component is expressing your interest and enthusiasm and you're more excited now because you know they're awesome and you have more information and so on. The thing you need to change if you, here's your worst case scenario. You do a Zoom session with four people 
Okay? That's four thank you emails. All right? Four, not one. Four. They can each have the first part the same and the third part the same, and the middle part is the part that is unique to each person. So you could have been in the same room with all four of them, and each one gets a, a unique middle paragraph. I'm not going to go into all the details. You need to put in there what you what you and they connected on and what made makes you connect. If you're talking to the big boss man, it's about how you're going to maximize their production, their group, their revenue, reduce their costs, whatever. If it's a system engineer that you're going to be partnering with, it's about how great it's going to be to work together because you know this language and she knows that language. Whatever. It just you got to pick something that is unique to them. It is an individual connection. Thanking them is about thanking them is not about thanking them it's about thanking them and developing a personal connection which strengthens a bond which makes them feel you right that you are connected that's what will make me hire you because i like you okay so that's what the thank you email about it is not an obligatory go to your phone and type you know thank you so much can't wait till the next session that's a waste Right, so so that's that's what you got to do, individual stuff, and then let's go you one better. When you send the thank you, if you interview again with the same person, first paragraph and third paragraph can be kind of similar. The middle paragraph has to be something different again from what you sent them before. I, I in case you weren't going to ask that, but that's for sure, hundred percent final answer. All right, Mary Wade, you are welcome. That it's been extremely helpful. Thank you. Okay, wait. Let's just put this up. This is really nice. Mary Wade, thank you for all your advice. It has been extremely helpful in searching for a job as the last time I had to do this was 12 years ago. COVID unfortunately put me out on the hunt, but you are awesome. Thank you. I love that you said that. None of that stuff ever gets old. And don't y'all, Mary, you, and anybody else think for one minute that it's not important for me to hear that. That's the kind of stuff that keeps me going on days I get a wee bit tired, right? It helps. It's fuel. I know it's working. You're giving me feedback, right? And, and it, it helps. It helps. And, and, and Ginger thinks so too. She's, you know, prancing around, but she appreciates it as well, as does Harley. All right. Here we go. You guys got some great questions this week. Kari, would you recommend telling on a cover letter or interview that I'm applying to grad school? Is this an advantage or disadvantage? Kari, everybody, never under any circumstances except one, say anything about any extracurricular stuff you're doing. No hobbies, no side projects, no side hustles, no how you are so, uh, you know, Proud that you volunteer for 20 hours a month. Don't do any of that. Why? You never know how the employer is going. You volunteer 20 hours a month, you're not working at my company. Why? Because you, even if you did it on the weekends, you're going to be tired during the week. I want you resting on the weekends. Right kind of thing. Like You never know how people are going to react. Okay? Now, if you say, I'm going to grad school at night because I'm getting my... Um, you know, bachelors in IT, blah, 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 and you're a developer or whatever, okay, fine. If you are going for a certification or uh, pursuing a training because, you know, I'm going to get the SAN certification test for whatever, and you're a storage engineer, awesome. But do not talk about general stuff at all, ever. Not, like, I'm going to get my MBA. No, don't, don't, don't say it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, unless it is very, very specific. It, it will do you harm, not good. You might think, people think, well, I'm ambitious. People are so self-absorbed about their company and what you mean to their ability to do what they need to do. And while, yes, I think employers want to hire ambitious people who want to climb and rise and learn and all that good stuff, something that extreme could cost you. It's true. No, wait. Somebody might love it. You don't know that. If, the, if somebody says, hey, it would be great if you also went to grad school for this, you say, well, I'm going. That's great. I believe that too. But unless they are so overt and you are completely clear that it's going to win you points, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't. It, uh, what if I need you to travel? What if I need you to, you know, work the weekends for an event or whatever? I mean, it, it could, it could hurt you. Just be careful. All right. How are we doing? 12, 4, we've been on for an hour, 101 minutes. All right. Listen, I, I want to tell you guys, don't forget you can grab the book, ebook, audio book, extra bonuses, $7 shipping, uh, materials and handling, whatever you want to call it. Okay. That's that interview coaching collection 97 bucks till tomorrow night uh that's the job interview mastery workshop it's the interview intervention course it's the session it's one of the main sessions in the uh, job search boot camp i'm interviewing you can join our our private uh, inter, uh linkedin and facebook groups for mile walk academy you can just have a lot of fun with the community it's a whole bunch of stuff and for my boot campers See you tomorrow. We and, and for anybody else, uh, we're going to be talking about if you're interested in joining the boot camp, we have a live boot camp or coaching session tomorrow. I'll give you the 100 bucks off. We're talking about congruence in your life, meaning where it starts, how you pack it on the resume, how you tell it in the interview. All this stuff needs to be in order. We got a bunch of stuff we're going to go through tomorrow. Huge QA, couple hours there, free leadership for a week. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff we got going. Otherwise, Tuesday, new video for you guys, and I'll see you next week at Live Office Hours. Okay, you guys be good. I loved it, every second of it. Be good. Have a great weekend.